Good morning, everyone. John Berman here. This morning, the president meets with some of his critics. Now, that headline might not seem that newsworthy, but this morning it is because some of those critics work for him. We're talking about his cabinet. In a few minutes, the president hosts a cabinet meeting, which will include the secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, who does not deny calling the president a moron. And then the president will lunch with the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, with whom he had summer shouting matches on the phone. How will that go? A busy morning for the presidency. And as Caitlin Collins at the White House with the latest. Caitlin. Yeah, that's right, John. The president and the Senate Majority Leader actually spoke over the phone on the this weekend, and now they're going to have lunch along with Vice President Mike Pence here at the White House. And this lunch comes as tensions between these two men have really hit an all-time high in recent weeks the president has publicly attacked and blamed mitch mcconnell for failure to repeal and replace the affordable care act you'll recall that angry phone call that turned into a screaming match between the two men when they went a period of time without speaking to each other but this lunch today john doesn't mean that they've entirely patched things up it just goes to show that they are so desperate for a legislative accomplishment that both of these men really 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 realize that they need each other as tax reform kind of hangs in the balance here now senator lindsey graham has also been one of the president's targets and he had a golf he played golf with the president this weekend and here's what he had to say about just how important getting tax reform a tax reform win truly is to republicans are you right. going to get tax reform done uh, yeah if we don't we're dead if we don't cut taxes and we don't eventually repeal and replace Obamacare, then we're going to lose across the board in the House in 2018. And all of my colleagues running in primaries in 2018 will probably get beat. It will be the end of Mitch McConnell as we know it. Now, all of this comes as the former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon is declaring war on these establishment Republicans and promising to primary them next year. But Senator Lindsey Graham said that really doesn't matter because they will lose across the board if they do not get something passed here, John. Now, this also comes as the president is going to have a cabinet meeting here at the White House with some of those officials. And you'll remember that first cabinet meeting the president had really raised some eyebrows when they went around the table and lavished praise on the president, but it's not likely that the one today will look like that as the president has feuded with several members of his own cabinet, the most recent being that Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who during an interview with Jake Tapper just yesterday on CNN, refused to say whether or not he called the president a moron, John. Yes, uh, I don't think that'll come up uh, in the cabinet meeting, at least not publicly, but Caitlin Collins, we will wait and see. Thank you so much. All right, joining us now, CNN political commentator Alice Stewart, Brian McGuire, a former chief of staff for Senator Mitch McConnell, and Betsy Woodruff, politics reporter for The Daily Beast. You know, Betsy, I, I want to start with you. This is a big meeting between the majority leader and the president. They have had words. They have had harsh words at times, but they need to figure this out. They need to get through this, else they both could be in big trouble. Right, exactly. McConnell is perhaps the most influential person when it comes to the ability of President Trump to keep some of his central campaign promises. He can't build the wall unless Congress provides the money that theoretically Mexico will eventually cover for. He can't repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, obviously without McConnell's help. And clearly on this tax reform issue, all roads lead through McConnell. When you couple that with the fact that these two men have a what appears to be an increasingly fraught relationship, there's a lot of pressure going into this lunch. And I think it's complicated by the fact that Trump seems to have a much more easy, open, and friendly relationship with McConnell's uh, Kentucky colleague, Senator Rand Paul. Yeah. Trump and Rand Paul went golfing over the weekend. They appear to have a pretty friendly, amicable, open, candid relationship, yes. even though Rand Paul is incredibly uncooperative in the Senate for Trump's agenda. So that's another layer of, of, of weirdness, I guess, to the way that the president and the Senate majority leader interact with each other. Rand Paul noting that the president always wins at golf, maybe because he's a good golfer, maybe because he's president. Brian McGuire, uh, we've spoken in the past. You thought at times that the tension between the senator, the Senate majority leader and the president might be a bit overblown or at least the senator's fury over it. However, what do you think he makes or what should he make of Steve Bannon, the president's former chief strategist, all but declaring war on the Republican establishment, which Mitch McConnell represents? Yeah, I think Steve Bannon um, has spent all his time since he left the White House focusing on Steve Bannon and promoting his own mm -hmm. interests, whereas Mitch McConnell has spent the last 10 months promoting the president's agenda. So I think Bannon is taking the president for a ride here, and if Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi aren't paying to support the website Breitbart, they should be. 
You think, to be clear, you think Steve Bannon is taking the president for a ride here, and if he listens to Bannon, he'll be in trouble? Yeah, look, if you look at his website, the entire site is devoted to attacking the president's advisors, his family, and to taking out senators who vote with Trump 100% of the, nearly 100% of the time. So the net effect of what he's trying to accomplish, according to that website, is to undermine the president's agenda. So, Alice Stewart, again, we've been asking this question for some time. Is it Steve Bannon's party or is it Mitch McConnell's party? Look, it's uh, the Republican Party, and right now uh, Donald Trump is the president, and Mitch McConnell has a significant role in that. And I think Betsy is right that the success of the Trump presidency lies in large part in the hands of Mitch McConnell. And if they cannot get a legislative accomplishment, that a large part of it rests on McConnell, but Trump is the president. And look, uh, Steve Bannon, since he has been outside of the White House, he has worked hard to continue and further the president's agenda. He has been doing that ever since. He worked on the campaign and in the White House. And, and I do agree that McConnell, uh, that is a priority for him to promote the president's agenda, but he hasn't had any successes. The president is frustrated with that. Republicans are frustrated with that. Steve Bannon is frustrated with that. And to be quite frank, if McConnell cannot uh, achieve a success, whether we're talking about tax reform, whether we're talking about repealing and replacing Obamacare, whether we're talking about many of these promises that these Republicans made while they ran for office, then he's in real trouble. The president is frustrated and he wants to get something done. So I would imagine that's going to be the topic du jour at lunch today is really encouraging McConnell to have some successes. And I think it is a, an important optic to note when the president signed his executive order with regard to Obamacare the other day, Mr. McConnell was not there. Speaker Ryan was not there. And these are people that should have been front and center on, on such a major part of, of the president's agenda. However, they were right. not there. And I think... Uh, there needs to be some progress. I, I want to move on to a different subject, but Brian, I want to give you a chance to respond to that because there was a suggestion there that this is on Mitch McConnell to prove that he can produce for the president. Well, Rand Paul was the leader on that particular issue, so I think it was appropriate for the person who was leading on it to be present at the signing. So I, I think that's a non-issue. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, someone just talk, spoke in my ear. I want to interrupt this for one second. I believe why? Because we have Bo Bergdahl news. All right, the breaking news.